I was so depressed about this I didn't talk to camera so I've calmed down a bit now. So we've just had a very very nerve-wracking experience of being towed backwards into the slip. Liz has been relegated, she's actually been sacked. I don't think it really was my fault, I think that was really really unfair. Oh, we just had fun and games wiring this up. Uh, the poor old lads had to stand with this solar panel on its side as I did the wiring. So we connected that panel over there, which is now covered to this one here. And if you remember, this one then runs down the vertical stanchion inside to the MPPT. But, uh, you know, we're connecting quite a lot of cables together. So it was, um, it was quite difficult and fiddly because we're using these little boxes, junction boxes, which are silicone onto the back of the panels. I'm not really showing anything of interest here because it's all happening under there. So the lads are now just uh, welding it into place. There's our rain catcher by the way. That by the way is as far as we can get it here because we've got the track inside the canvas track that runs around inside so um, that's as close to the corner as we could get it, which is a bit of a shame. Would have been nice to have been right in the corner, but um, it should be enough, I think. A little glimpse of our spotlight there. I haven't shown you this one before either. So if you remember Liz mentioned the spots, we call them spots, they're not, they're floods. They are floods, 37 watts, I think. And um, we got the lads, the stainless boys, to make us this little clamp here which allows us to A, mount that on and B, swivel it round. So this actually moves in a cradle here so we can tilt it up and down. We can obviously spin it around and then if we really want to, we can drop it down as well. So two of those connectors, there's the other one just down there out the way at the moment. All right, Liz meanwhile is attempting a job that should have been done months and months and months ago. When we uh, got this installed last, the person who did it, who was a reputable carpenter, didn't use primer on the Sikaflex, and so it's come away and it leaks. So, we're doing it ourselves this time, this kind of job. I mean, we did most of the other patches ourselves anyway, but uh, this one, I don't know why, we left it to someone else to do. I'm not doing that again. Best to it ourselves, but the biggest problem is removing the old Sikaflex from the frame. That's what Liz is doing at the moment. Something that we've asked the lads to include in our davits. Since we now have this uh, reinforcement on the uh, corner there, makes it a bit difficult to tie up the dinghy cross lines, which I tie across like that to stop the dinghy from moving sideways. So, I've got Lek to knock up a couple of uh, little cleats, which should make tying off those lines much easier and uh, more secure as well. That's but behind me there, all looking good, isn't it? The uh, Dodger is now on, the stainless is in place, the solar panels are on, uh, the davits have all been sorted with their new little cleats and we've moved, even moved the stern light as well that used to get in the way when we talked the dinghy, so we've put that on the back of the uh, davits. It's all looking good, isn't it? You'd have thought that we are close to finishing and leaving. I'm afraid not. Uh, the other day I was so depressed about this I didn't talk to camera so I've calmed down a bit now to explain that we have a problem with one of the seacocks. Uh, we have three seacocks under the sink, actually we've got four. Uh, three are identical and one is broken. Um, it's uh, DZR brass uh, which is uh, de-zincifying brass. The problem is the little spindle inside the mechanism that turns the ball isn't and that is prone to de-zincifying. Or corroding and it snapped off. With one gone it makes me a bit worried that the other two could also go because they are of a similar age and design. So uh, one option would be to try and sort this out whilst we're in the water. The problem is is that they're slightly under the water line. Uh, the other uh, problem is that if we try and move the seacock we could disturb the skin fitting as well and I don't want to be doing that in the water. So guess what we're doing today? We're hauling out again. It never ends does it? 
we're, we're just having the slings put on. We're in the, in the slip because we have got to haul out again, and which is fine normally, no problem, but of course we've got no engine at the moment. So we've just had a very, very nerve-wracking experience of being towed backwards into the slip. Okay, as you can see, Ricky has taken Liz's job. Uh, Liz has been relegated. She's actually been sacked because we believe the leak is possibly due to a loose nut on the inside of the tank. Uh, I have, I've yet to break uh, the news to her, but um, Ricky's very kindly uh, retapped that leaking hole. So we've gone up from a size 10 bolt to a size 12 and um, we're just putting them back in. We're also putting in that uh, uh, gasket sealant stuff which Liz brought back from the UK that we were recommended but it's certainly used for these applications so we're just putting a dab of that on the bolts as they go through the holes and then of course we're going to make sure that the uh, nuts are done up properly this time Liz. Day one of On The Hard part two had an horrendous storm come through last night, the worst storm I've seen in a long while and heard the very sad news that a tourist boat uh, overturned, it capsized with um, 90 odd Chinese tourists on board and uh, I think another boat was involved as well and there are still 50 people missing, they found one body already just shows you how vicious these storms are and this particular episode happened by uh, I think it was Racha, the island of Racha which is south of Phuket and it's completely exposed to the Indian Ocean there is no landmass beyond that until the Maldives so uh, the weather can get really really severe there were warnings there were weather warnings as early as 2.30 in the afternoon to say it was coming so one has to question what they were doing out there, but even so, uh, that aside, terrible story, and so fingers crossed that they find more people. So first morning, uh, got up nice and early and got the heat gun out and have started uh, tackling the seacocks, and then got a call from Ricardo to say that the canvas man is now ready to start working on the canvas, and he wants to keep working all the way through Sunday if necessary and complete the canvas work. So this is brilliant. Hauled out yesterday afternoon, started on the seacocks this morning. Canvas man will hopefully finish by the end of the weekend, uh, fingers crossed. Uh, who knows, we could be going back in the water next week and have almost finished all the work that we need to do. I'm Peter Fool! Liz is going to clean out the tanks this morning and we're going to put diesel back in and let it sit and see how, how it fares. So I just thought I'd quickly show you what I'm dealing with regarding the seacocks because they're not easy to get to. Kitchen sink and underneath the sink is where we keep our compressors for the fridges on two different shelves and here at the back you can see the automatic bilge pump seacock which is that one. Then we've got the sink drainer uh, which is that one, our sink can't drain with gravity so we have to use a pump for that and then over <clears throat> behind here is a 40 mil diameter seacock you can't see it but it's um this one and that's for the manual drain so the middle one is the one that we had problems with but figured that we should probably change them all because they're all of um, the same age and a similar design so i want to take these off first to see if we can salvage those um, skin fittings in there gonna run a cigar, uh, heat gun over them to see if we can take off the hoses without breaking them although I think we're going to replace these hoses anyway so uh, that's the next stop step but it's it's quite difficult as you can imagine trying to get in there so 
slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Well, I've just surprised myself. I've just managed to take off the first seacock, which is rather good. Uh, just applied heat with the heat gun there. And uh, as you can see, and there it is. There's a bit of light coming through from the deck. There we go. And uh, skin fitting didn't move, which was encouraging. So that's one off, four to go. Well, the gods are on my side today. Five minutes later, managed to extract the second seacock. This is the problem one. Uh, it's our sink drainer, so it's full of 10 day old coffee, which stinks. But it's off and the skin fitting didn't move. This is the troublesome uh, seacock. And I thought it might be interesting to show you how this thing is constructed because it might help you understand how these things break so obviously there's the hose tail there so this is the inside and if we look on the outside that's what you'd see from outside you can see the ball valve that's the actual ball there now the way this works is that ball has a slit in it and this spigot or um, axle whatever you want to call it that goes in to the slot then you move the hammer and it turns the uh, ball but as you can see here if I were to take this out you can see that there let's focus on it has corroded it's in fact it looks like it's snapped now we can see inside here now this is gonna be a bit tricky but we'll try our best let's try and just inside there you can see now that's the slot on that ball valve itself and you can see the remainder of that spigot or uh, axle the other end of that inside there so that's what snapped off and that's more than likely due to corrosion and um, that is why we had a problem opening and closing this because whilst I could turn this it wasn't actually doing anything there's your large seacock update uh, we've got the lads who weren't, weren't able to take it out, so I wasn't being a wimp. Um, what they've had to do is to cut it out from outside. They've actually cut the skin fitting, and that was the only way we could get this one out. Now, Ricky was thinking we were going to have to do this on all of them, so the fact we've only had to do it on, well, one so far, I haven't told them about the other small one, uh, is good. So we've already put the order in for the new Seacocks, and we preempted this problem, so we have ordered a new skin fitting for this as well. So we last saw Ricky and Jamie putting everything back together inside the tanks, leak cured, which is all good and well, so I now come in and I've now got to clean it all up yet again, get my head inside the tanks. Uh, and when I pulled out the last of the diesel that was down and I could see right inside, I got a bit of a shock because there are all kinds of bits of black rubber in there and it can only have come from the gasket that Jamie and I put on however many weeks ago that was. So I've cleaned it up even more, dried it up, and there's gasket everywhere. Let me just put my hand down here, see if I can pull it out for you. Hold on. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, there's a handful. You see that? Yeah. So that's the black rubber gasket and the sealant that was with it. It's all crumbling and coming out of the fuel and going into the fuel pipe and coming into the tank. So we've got to take everything out, clean up the pipes, clean up the tanks, do new gaskets. So I'd just like to say, I don't think it really was my fault. I think that was really, really unfair. It was a bit unfair. You got a bit of bad press out of that episode. It wasn't Liz's fault at all. Um, the problem is is that it's a threaded bolt so when you put the bolt through you twist it in if you put a nut on the other side and you tighten that up you're actually pulling the bolt through that thread and I think that was the problem but anyway I should just add that don't forget these videos are a few weeks behind and we have solved the fuel leak really appreciate everyone who's got in touch with their solutions we have followed up on a couple of them we do have a solution we have now fixed it and you'll see that in a few weeks time yeah we go through a bit of pain to get there we do and i just wanted to so i wanted to keep these bits in there just yeah. to make the point that this has not been an easy no, exercise it's definitely not and i'd like to point out also that i do come back and get involved and i do help sort it all out for you, you <laughs> well with you not for you yeah. in that episode you saw us battling with seacocks mm. 
very, very important to check your seacocks. So. Mm, and I wanted to say on camera, did you check those seacocks before you went in the water? Because I was back in the UK, so if you didn't, it's all your fault. <laughs> of course I check the seacocks. Yeah. Most important thing you do when you haul out is to check the seacocks. Um, they were all working fine. I think that was just on its last legs. And as I say, only one of them broke. Mm. So we figured, well, if one's broken, how long before we break the others? Yeah, so. we've learned that, haven't we? I mean, generally, we, we, we did talk about it. I mean, not cheap to, to cha change, particularly those beautiful um, bronze ones. No, brass, mm. bronze, bronze. Um, but we can't afford for anything like that to happen while we're out at sea. So yeah, we went ahead. And uh, yeah, you're going to see the great fitting of <laughs> the seacock <laughs> situation over the next couple of weeks as well. Because the other thing that we have learned is that when one thing goes wrong, it does normally mean that everything else will go wrong. A bit like light bulbs, when you change your light, when you put your light bulbs in in your house, they'll all start failing at around about the same time. So it was the right thing to do. You can see we're standing on the Respa. We have hauled out once more. <laughs> <laughs> Life on the hard. Well, there's not much we can do about it. It is what it is. So we have to go with the flow, I'm afraid. Yeah, we've got used to it. We've been on the hard lots like most cruisers. You do spend quite a lot of time on the hard. We're staying on the boat at the moment because, uh, you know, obviously we have pretty much everything that we need here. The only thing is that we have to go down the ladder to the loo at night. But since the loo is just there, it's actually quite handy. <laughs> By the way, thank you very much to everyone that has got in touch and left comments ideas, suggestions and also stories in the last couple of uh, the last week's episode and the extra that we put out on Monday, yeah. which is an, a new thing putting out on Monday. It wasn't extra. It wasn't a special. It was an ep wasn't an episode. Yes, yes. But we got really good feedback on that. God, yeah, amazing. I'm still reading through them today. Um, yeah, so every Thursday our episodes come out. That's set in stone. And when we can do extras, when we have a little bit of time, we will. And we'll try and put them out on Mondays. But the comments have been amazing. You are extraordinarily knowledgeable, experienced, and clever, clever people out there, aren't they? They are. And someone actually said in the comments that this is the beauty of social media, and it yeah. is, and it's what we've always said, especially with YouTube. It's one of the things we really appreciate is this two-way dialogue that we have with people, yeah. and it's great. We love it. So thanks. thank you very much. So, usual. Subscribe, please, does help us. Like, like hit that like, like button. <laughs> comment, do keep putting those incredible comments in and share if you feel like it. And if you feel like supporting us, then do head on over to followtheboat.com forward slash thanks and uh, your support would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, it would. So in the meantime, peace and fair winds. KW Caban, do you want to do this one? Okay. Sailing her, you got a mosquito there. Sailing her towel, sailing to f off. It's very popular to have the luck rock. Can't speak today. Um, um, oh, there's no room above us because. F oh. off. So you can just stop that. Oh.